But the Egyptians very quickly elevated the cat from beloved pet to divine god. A goddess, in fact, naturally. With both a serene face and a frightening face. A goddess whose cult would last over 2,000 years, longer so far than either Christianity or Islam. Today its worshippers are long gone, unless you count the ladies at cat shows. But here in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, I can still see the evidence of this mighty feline goddess with two faces. This is the lioness goddess Sekhmet, and she is um, sort of the scarier side of cat divinities. And she's supposed to be powerful, she protects women, and she of course brings warfare and plague if she so chooses. And she's got a Uraeus snake on her forehead. So that could kill? Yes. That would sort of be a don't mess with me kind of thing. Yes. And right now she's wearing his nice sheath dress and sitting down and being beautiful. But of course the implicit in it is because she is a lioness, she can strike out and kill. And does she have an alter ego? Yes, her alter ego is much nicer and calmer, sort of the cat goddess in a tamer way, and that's Bastet. Bastet, the cat goddess. Statuesque, sublime, the quintessential cat. Bastet was the symbol of love and beauty and music and basically self-indulgence, as you would expect from a cat. So this is the kind of, of goddess a lot of people would be having in their house shrines. But look at these ones up here. These are just exquisite. They're fabulous. They're terribly lifelike. I've seen cats looking just I like that. Do you like cats? I do like cats. I'm allergic to them, but I like them. In ancient Egypt, pet cats were adored. Whenever one died, the entire family would shave their heads in mourning. But not all cats were pets. There were other cats, bred to be offered to Bastet, in the hope of earning her blessing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, to do that, they had to be dead. When they went to the temple of Bastet, they made offerings of mummified cats. And the idea was that because a cat was taking the message, the goddess would pay much more attention to it. And were, they, were these tame cats or cats around the temple? How did they get the cats for the mumming? They probably bred them in catteries and you would have just thousands and thousands of cats there. We have x-rayed them so you get a sense of what's inside and it's really quite surprising. Look at that. What is a bit awful about this particular one is the neck has been broken because they couldn't always wait for cats to die. So we have some cat mummies where their heads have been bashed in or they're being strangled. <gasps> Little cat. That one's an interesting one because... Um, oh my well, God, what is it? Well, you can see it's a jumble. When they didn't have enough cats, they would just gather up a few bones and mummify that and make it look beautiful like a cat should be. So that's extraordinary. This is sort of cat hamburger, if that doesn't sound too frightful. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of <laughs> just sort of chopped up and made into a shape. That, that's very accurate, though, and it certainly looks that way. What's the Egyptian word for cat? Meow. Mm. <laughs> is it? Yes, it really is. <laughs> it sounds familiar, doesn't it? The cat with two faces. Cats as angels and cats as demons. Egypt is the home of the original prototype cat, the Mao, and whatever shape or pattern your pet cat is, it's descended from this ancient line of stripy tabby.